All right, how's it going, knife nerds? I am back from a very long hiatus from YouTube. I uh, haven't done a video in quite some time, just didn't have time to really mess with it for a while. And, uh, you know, knives come and go and all the life things get in the way. But I am here today and we're going to knock out a quick little Hogue uh, Deca build. Now, uh, this is my first experience with the Hogue Deca. And uh, this is the mm, CPM Magna Cut deca and uh it's the drop point blade version it's brand new except for uh last night i i took it down and uh completely broke the cage down and uh polished the washers uh polished the mating surfaces and then um you know just kind of cleaned things up and treated it with the nano oil and uh reassembled it and uh, you know, just so I could get that out of the way because that's a, a bit of a longer process and I don't want to do that on camera and waste a bunch of time for you guys. So um, yeah, man, this is the Hogue Deca. Um, it's a pretty cheap knife. I think it was like $100, $124 or something like that. And uh, that's a really good price for Magna Cut. And I wanted to see what this guy was all about. Um, of course, I'm not gonna keep these um, cheap plastic scales that you get on the Magna Cut version of the DECA. Um, but so uh, I got to looking for scales and there isn't many out there but there is these and these are from a company called Original Goat and uh, I got their card here original goat and uh, it seems like a pretty cool uh, newish company that I didn't really know about until I started looking into DECA scales and uh, they're making these these scales they're making scales uh, for 8020s and DECAs and uh, maybe a few other things that they got going on but uh, these are the scales these are the uh, expanded aluminum they got I guess the machining pattern that they call this expanded and uh, this is the XL version. It's got the extended um, lanyard loop area back here. This comes out like a quarter inch, uh, maybe give or take, you know, uh, longer than the DECA does normally. And so um, the DECA has got a pretty short handle on it. You can get all four fingers on it, no problem, but it is a little bit short. And so um, what these scales are going to do is extend... Uh, extend those scales. Oh yeah, that's over a quarter inch for sure. That's that's a good that's a good amount of uh, extra scale there um, to grab onto, and so that's a pretty cool thing. And we got a one of their backspacers, and this one kind of simulates a floating backspacer, and so uh, also made out of aluminum. And uh, this is all raw. There's no. Um, there's no anodizing or Cerakote on it. They do offer Cerakote, but I can't say I'm a big fan of Cerakote on scales personally. I just don't like the feel of it. It's kind of slick. And so I went with the raw aluminum, and uh, I think they look pretty freaking sick. And I got, of course, a Lynch Northwest uh, pocket clip here for the DECA as well. And uh, so, yeah, man, we're going to get right into it. And uh, hopefully, if this knife, the, these decas, man, um, they're they're a lot like a bug out. They're very fiddly um, to uh, disassemble and reassemble, and uh, you got to keep the whole pivot, you know, area, washers and cage, all that's got to be aligned. <coughs> Excuse me, or um, you're gonna run into. A pain in the ass. Um, I completely broke it down and took the whole cage apart so when I reassemble it I had quite a bit of a pain in the ass there. Um, but I got this little thing here it's just a little diamond uh, needle file that I have laying around and I'm gonna try to use that to keep the pivot from you know separating the whole assembly and, and causing me to have to uh, take a lot more time doing this video and uh, that would suck so we're gonna try to avoid that so 
the whole um, assembly on the DECA is T8, which is awesome. They are stainless steel screws, which are blackened. The black finish on them does not seem to be super durable. I wish it was, or I wish somebody would come out with a new hardware kit for the DECA so we can maybe get some titanium on it or, you know, at least some better um, satin stainless screws would be nice and uh, just kind of clean up the hardware for the DECA because this hardware, um, I you know, I, I had another DECA briefly and the hardware was with the black finish was all rubbed through and so I think it's kind of fragile uh, on the finish there and I don't I don't particularly like that uh, with black hardware when it's fragile like that kind of sucks okay so this little scales kind of stuck on the standoff there a little bit all right now Pray for me, guys. Let's hope we can pull this off without too much hassle. So the goal here is to take uh, my little needle file and push out the pivot <coughs> and keep the assembly together without it coming apart. I'm, I'm pulling back on the lock to kind of release some tension and uh, hopefully get... Yep, okay, the pivot's released, and we're going to just keep that there for a moment, and then we're going to get the backside disassembled here. So we're going to have, remove the standoffs here if, if I can with one hand, boom, I believe these standoffs um, our position specific well at least the the center one is uh, because that one actually spaces the um, the cage and so you want to keep that one um, with the cage I don't I don't think the other two are not different sizes but that one is so oof. Luckily, these screws are all the same size. I kind of got those mixed up for a second there. Okay. Now, now, with any luck, I should be able to pull the assembly off of here. Yep, okay. No problemo. Piece of cake. And so this is, uh, these scales are right hand tip up carry only. So got my clip, my lock side scale here. And we're going to just slide that puppy on there. Hopefully without screwing up the assembly. Oh yeah. Dig it. Okay. Now the the pivot is captured it's got a D shape on it so that has to be oriented correctly Oof, I don't know if I'm gonna I don't know if I'm gonna nail this like I like I had hoped oh no 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 oh we done screwed it it's boned. Totally boned. These are very um, fiddly knives to mess with, guys. No joke. We're just going to try to wrangle the blade into position here. Fiddle with it until it falls into place. Ideally. Kind of push on the lock a little bit. Maybe that'll help get things lined up. Ouch. Ooh, that's sharp. Yep, we're bleeding. We're bleeding tonight, people. We're bleeding for your entertainment. Oh, come on. Don't fight me. So they make a pivot tool. 
um, that you can pick up on like Blade HQ, I think, that makes this a little easier, um, which I do not have, so I'm just kind of winging it with this stupid little needle thing. But uh, yeah, it's almost, it's almost there. <laughs> it's like the pivot is just hanging up on one little ledge or something stupid. Come on now, do not fight me. Ah, got it. Okay, that did not go according to plan, but we are back on track. Pain in the ass, like I said, um, you know, <laughs> these little guys are tricky, man. And when you get it together, for the love of God, don't let it come apart again. So, um, let's see. Are these captured? These are not... Oh, these are not D-shaped. Okay. install these standoffs first and the uh, backspacer cradles over the standoffs which is an interesting design where did my other standoff go uh -huh. I'm starting to feel uh, <laughs> nostalgic here guys I kind of miss doing YouTube videos and uh, I hope to come back with a lot more stuff for you guys i uh, just been out of it for a while, but yeah, I'm ready to get back into it, man. I love making videos and uh, just entertaining people and, uh, you know, giving my opinions, reviews and whatnot. And uh, so, yeah, hopefully I'll be back around some more. And let's see. Man, this is actually relatively... Um, mm, okay. You're gonna fight me a little bit on the backspacer there. Something seems a little off. We need to figure out what that is. Uh, hmm. Something's binding or not lining up. Okay, I can get this back off without screwing up the pivot. Um, maybe these standoffs are specific. I don't think they should be. Let's make sure everything's lined up here. Uh, you know what? Hmm. Hmm. All this seems to be in working order. That uh, that lock sure does rest deep into the scale there. Kind of make it a little harder to access compared to the stock scales. Um. It's almost like uh, something might be off with the scale here. Uh, let me get this middle spacer out. I just want to test the theory here real quick and see if that's causing some issues or something. Just want to see. Just for test fitment here. No, it's... It's just kind of seems a little off in this middle standoff here, which I did not remove. It should have been 
it's the correct standoff so see what I mean it's kind of like creating a teeter-totter effect on this middle standoff and uh, yeah I don't know if that's gonna be a problem but let's go ahead and assemble it and see if things straighten up once it's screwed together shall we okay let's grab our pivot oops backspacer hello Yeah, these, scare, these scales are thicker um, than the factory scales. They really, um, so you can see how, how deep that pivot sinks into the scales there. Scales are quite a bit thicker than factory. Oh, and actually, once I screwed that pivot down, it kind of seems a little better now. And so let's just uh, continue on the mission. Just a small detour. Test all this and then we'll install the clip. am I missing a screw? Uh-huh. How'd that get over there? Yeah, we're on point tonight, guys. I uh, am running on low sleep here, so you'll have to forgive me for my bumbling. Okay. Moment of truth. That blade is not 100% centered, but that can be adjusted out. It's pretty well centered. And, uh... Yeah, we got good action. It's dropping good. Pivot is not full tight. Let's get a little more, a little more gusto on that. Still a little bit of play there. Close. Okay, now we're not dropping. See, that's what I was afraid of when I saw that binding on the uh, uh, center freaking standoff there. Something's a little wacky. And, uh, yeah. I might have to go back through it uh, once I'm done with the assembly here. Okay, no blade play. It's not dropping very good um, I can flick it down no problem but it was super drop shutty before and now it's not so um, that little bit of binding on the scale might be affecting something I, it looks like the assembly is in there correctly I don't know if this is going to be an issue with the scales or if something's just not aligned right yeah, definitely not wanting to drop like it should. So uh, I'll fiddle with that a little more later. Let's go ahead and put the clip on here. Uh, I couldn't find any um, aftermarket hardware kits for this knife, which is unfortunate. It's not a bug out. Um, this is Hogue's answer to the bug out. So there is not nearly as much aftermarket support for this knife. Although it is pretty cool that it comes in MagnaCut for 125 bucks. And so, um, they really make this a pain in the ass to get out of here, don't they? So, I, I, you know, it's, it's, this is uh, 
like I said, it's Hogue's answer to the bug out, and I think it's a pretty decent um, offering. I like the shape of the blade very much. Um, it kind of reminds me of, uh, oh, what's his name? Oh, shit. Yeah, like I said, I'm on low sleep, guys. I can't remember freaking names right now. Okay. Screw fought me all the way there all the way home um, the lynch clip interesting that there's three holes back here you can you can thread the um, pivot or the clip you can thread it back further and kind of close off that lanyard hole a little bit which is interesting to get the clip deeper I guess was their thinking on that um, it, the clip does recess into the scale, which is good. I wish the screws were flat tops, but they're button heads, so they stick up a little bit. All right, let's check this puppy out. So I, I definitely dig the lynch clip. Um, let's see what it feels like. Uh, the lynch clip actually makes it... Uh, it's not like a hot spot, but I feel... I feel the tall part of the lynch clip and this is this is a thing with all lynch clips I don't know they just they're really tall back here and I can't say I'm a fan of that I like lower uh, lower slimmer clips yes this will fit on the fattest jean pockets on earth but um, you know at the sacrifice of, of ergonomic comfort in the handle uh, I'm not I'm not too keen on lynch clips I love uh, lynch products that you know, I got my badass all-access pass here. Um, big fan. And uh, you notice even the clip on this is pretty tall. But it's a pocket. It's a freaking pry bar. So it doesn't bother me because I'm not holding it in my hand. Um, but they make, you know, Lynch offers clips for a lot of different knives. And that's pretty good. So, it, you know, is it better than the factory clip? Uh, time will tell on that. Um, the factory clip is definitely smaller, slimmer, and stainless, while this clip is titanium. And uh, definitely a much lower profile on the clip. Uh, yeah, I guess I, yeah, it's, it's lower in the front, but maybe it's pretty close in the back. It's a hair lower, but not much. Um, so what do I think of these... Um, what do I think of the original goat scales? Well, I, I love the milling. I love the jimping. Uh, they give you the option to add jimping or no jimping. You got jimping all along the back here. Um, and with this particular knife, you put that right in your palm. You put that there to grab the button to flick the blade closed. And so that jimping on the back there adds a little extra grip so it doesn't fly out of your hand. I dig that. Um, Comfort wise, they feel really, really good. Um, good ergos, and the jimping is right where my thumb lands. Um, the jimping on the blade, I don't, you know, my thumb doesn't wouldn't normally rest there. It rests behind it, and that's where this jimping is on the scales, and it feels really good. So, um, very much dig that. I think that's pretty sick. Um, I, I like the scales. They're, they're a little thick. I, I wish they were thinner, um, you know, so that there would be easier access. You can get to this with this particular, these expanded scales. You can get to um, this lock button pretty easily, but it's not quite as accessible as it was with the stock scales. Um, not a deal breaker by any means. The scales are very well machined. They're they're made in the USA, and uh, I really really love the backspacer. That looks hot. Um, definitely love the floating backspacer look, and uh, pretty sick. Um, I just wish I knew what what that little bit of binding was, but you know we we can probably figure that out at another time, and uh, just give it a good flick, and it it'll fly closed anyway. So. No big deal, I guess. Um, you know, as far as the DECA, um, I had a bug out. I just did a bug out build 
a few weeks back, guys. I sold that knife. I wish I had done it on video because um, I really liked that build. It had the Flytanium Lotus scales, and uh, the, the, they're really contoured. They're really comfortable scales, and I really liked the bug out after I did um, that build. And so, um, first impressions of the DECA here with the OG Goat scales. This is this is pretty good um, for the price that you're going to spend. You're going to spend 120 bucks, uh, 125 dollars ish on the Hogue Deca Magna Cut, and then the scales are, I believe, they were 70 dollars, and then the backspacer was like 25. So, uh, you know, you're in it for um, you're in it for a little over 200 dollars. Um, 200 dollars, you get Magna Cut. And uh, I like the, the weight and the feel of this, by the way. It's, it's heavier, but not too heavy. Like, it's still got, you know, it gives it some heft. It feels solid now. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, for the money, this is not a bad setup for EDC. You know, if you, you, you want something that you can carry and beat on and uh, beat on it indeed, this thing has got really thin blade stock, much like the bug out. And uh, so it's gonna it's a it's gonna be a very very good slicer, and uh, so is the bug out. So um, you know they both are are great cutters. Um, the the Hogue Deca blade shape is a little sexier than 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 the bug out. Not gonna lie, this is this is a really nice looking blade. Um, you got your nice swedge up top here, heavy drop point, and uh, some jimping back here. Just looks pretty dope and so um I, you know is it a competitor for the bug out i would say no um because there's just so many so much more options for the bug out right you got um so many different companies like rips garage tech and uh rock scale designs that make insanely sick titanium scales for the bug out and uh backspacers and hardware kits uh titanium everything and uh, different blade steels that you can get. So um, this is not quite at the level of a bug out as far as getting a, a factory knife and then having the aftermarket support and adding all those parts and stuff. This is not not quite a bug out. It's it's a great knife, um, but if I, you know if if I was going to do a custom build um, and and have it be a, a keeper that I want to hang on to and and freaking be a daily user um the bug out would probably be would probably be my choice between the two unfortunately uh it's nice that this comes in magna cut i'd like to see i'd like to see a bug out in magna cut that'd be freaking awesome i don't know i don't believe they've done that yet um they've got a lot of different steels but i don't think they've done magna cut yet and uh guys magna cut is killing it i love the steel I've sharpened it a few times and it really takes a nasty edge and it holds it really well. So, um, yeah, overall, this is a pretty sexy knife. You got to admit, this is, I mean, that looks great. Love the mill work and stuff. Don't know if it'll be a keeper for me, but, uh, yeah, most aren't to be honest. So anyways, uh, I'm glad to be back on YouTube. I uh, hope to be bringing you guys some more videos in the in the distant future here and I uh, will see you next time. Later.